Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. Breaking overnight, Pfizer's vaccine wins emergency use approval in Britain, clearing the way for the first shots to be given in just a matter of days. Congress is inching closer to a possible COVID-19 relief package, what it would mean for you and what could stand in the way coming up. And their basic necessities to most of us, but to seniors on a tight budget in Kern County, they could be luxury items. The donations we need your help collecting today and how you can help us stuff the bus outside our station with some joy this holiday season. Today is Wednesday, December 2nd, 2020. Good morning, everyone. I'm Alex Fisher along with Maddie Jansen. Maddie, it's good to see you, friend. It's been a beautiful couple of days. How has it been in the mountains? You know, it's been beautiful. It's fall still, even though it's December. Perfect weather for hanging Christmas lights, which I think uh, means I'm sending my husband up on the ladder today. because <laughs> We haven't done ours yet. I know a lot of people started really early this year, but we're a little behind the times, but it's gonna, been beautiful. Yeah, I was going to say, I started mine, I think, three weeks ago, maybe Uh, earliest I've ever done my Christmas lights. I will say that Uh, and and Kevin is in the same boat. He put his lights up several weeks ago. Officially turned them on, though, uh, right after Thanksgiving. Usually you turn it on. What was it, Kev? Thanksgiving night, I think. Hey, I saw your display and it is absolutely fantastic. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, a lot of uh, heart and soul goes into that. Again, a tribute to my late grandmother. And uh, if you have Christmas lights out, maybe those inflatables, especially if you're in the mountains, you'll probably want to deflate them and kind of bring them in the garage uh, the next uh, couple of days here because we are expecting some winds to pick up in the mountains and also uh, looking at some winds to pick up here in the valley as well. want to show you the watches and warnings and what we have in place right now. We are going to be looking at a wind advisory uh, late tonight into our Thursday and that will include some areas of the valley in the southern portion uh, and so we could see some blowing dust and then we also are going to be looking at those winds into the mountains and we're looking at a dry easterly wind and that will really creates a fire issue so fire weather warning is in place uh, for our Kern County mountains uh, through Friday at 6 p.m. and we'll continue to talk more about that a little later. 39 degrees in Bakersfield right now no winds to talk about and as we take a look at the numbers you can see we're going to be quite warm this afternoon by three o'clock we should be right near 67 so we we start in the 30s and upper 60s by the afternoon. 41 in Tehachapi right now. Light easterly wind at 10. And you can see here on our winds, uh, no major issues right now. Hour by hour, though, those winds will continue to pick up throughout uh, the afternoon. And temperatures expected in the mid to upper 50s. I'll have much more in your forecast. That's coming up in just a little bit. For now, we'll send it back over to you. All right, Kat, thanks so much. Your time now is 503 and breaking overnight. Pfizer and BioNTech say they've received permission for emergency use of their COVID-19 vaccine in Britain. So from early next week, we will start the program of vaccinating people against COVID-19 here in this country. Uh, And uh, as we know from earlier announcements, this vaccine is uh, effective. Uh, The That was UK Health Secretary Matt Hancock. He says Britain's National Health Service will begin administering the vaccine as early as next week. The approval has made Britain one of the first countries to get the green light to begin vaccinating its population. This as the FDA continues to evaluate requests from Pfizer and Moderna for distribution of their vaccines here in the United States. Meantime, Public Health announced 657 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday along with one new death. And health officials say people are testing positive for the virus at a rate we have not seen in months. Our positivity rate is 13.4%. That's more than 2% higher than it was four days ago and more than double the state's average. 89 people are being treated for the virus in a local hospital, according to our local health department. Our death toll stands at 449 lives lost. Free testing events continue to be held around the county, some with a financial incentive. Anyone who gets a free test at certain locations can also receive a $25 Visa gift card. Kern Public Health has made 12,000 of those cards available. You are limited to one gift card per person per day, and here's where you can pick one up. The Lamont, Rosemond, or Wasco Public Libraries, the Arvin Public Health Building, Kern Valley Hospital, and Good Samaritan Hospital.
And there are more free testing events happening this week. Today at Bear Mountain Elementary School in Arvin. Tomorrow at Sierra Vista Elementary School in Arvin. And then on Friday at Greenfield Family Resource Center in Bakersfield. And then on Saturday at the Weed Patch Supermarket in Lamont. Walk-ins are welcome. 505 is your time now. A man's in the hospital after suffering multiple gunshot wounds. The Kern County Sheriff's Office is investigating. A number of law enforcement officers responded to the area of Flower and Miller Streets around 6 o'clock last night for a report of a shooting. Officials say they found a man who'd been shot several times. He was taken to the hospital where he was described as being in critical condition. No arrests have been made. The identity of the man who was shot has not been released. And new this morning, a motorcyclist was arrested after leading deputies on a chase. It started just before midnight in the 1400 block of Rosedale Highway. The sheriff's office said deputies tried to pull the rider over, but he didn't stop. A pursuit ensued. Deputies backed off and the motorcyclist slowed down, but continued to be tracked by helicopter. Deputies eventually caught up with him in the 8200 block of Fuller Drive near the intersection with Highway 184. The rider was booked on felony evading, reckless driving and other charges. And we now know the name of a person who died in a crash a week ago on Highway 65. According to the CHP, a minivan headed south on Highway 65 near Meadowsfield Airport drifted into the northbound lane, hitting an SUV. It happened last Wednesday. Both drivers, 27-year-old Jacob Johnson and 28-year-old Luis Raya, died at the scene. A passenger in the SUV also died. Yesterday, the coroner identified him as 57-year-old Guadalupe Roman of Terabella in Tulare County. Officers say it's unknown if alcohol or drugs were factors. The California Highway Patrol is holding another free Start Smart class next week to help teenage drivers stay safe on our roads. It's open to current and prospective teen drivers and their parents and discusses safe driving habits and tips to avoid a crash. It's happening Tuesday at, at the Bakersfield CHP 420 Club. You can call the Bakersfield CHP office at 396-6600 to sign up. All right, your time now is 507 and it is the season of giving and we've been talking about uh, so many different ways that you can help make Christmas just a little merrier for so many people. But now we're asking you to make the season just a little bit brighter for our seniors. And this morning we're teaming up with Christmas for seniors for the annual stuff the bus. Uh, drive and it is going to be happening outside our station this morning and into the afternoon. Joining us now is 17's Taylor Schaub. He has details on how you can help out. Taylor, so important for our seniors, for all of us in our community to come out and support them. Well, good morning, Alex. There's no more community that is in need right now than seniors. So a local nonprofit once again is helping them out during the holidays. And joining me right now is the executive director of Christmas for Seniors, Sandy Morse. Sandy, if I could have you come on in here this morning. And talk about this wonderful event that we've been hosting outside of our KGT studios at Compassion Corner for years. What is Stuff the Bus? Stuff the Bus is an opportunity for those in our community to come down and make donations towards our project. We adopt homebound, isolated, low-income seniors every year, and we try to give them things that will make their holiday, holiday more special. Uh, this year we are collecting sundries, toiletries, two-ply toilet paper, paper towels, Kleenex, lotions, soaps, any of that type of thing. And we also this year are collecting non-perishable food. So this year the seniors are going to get a bag of toiletries and cleaning supplies, and they will also get a bag of foods. And we're trying to give them at least five meals. And when I say meals, we're talking about chili and cornbread, soup and crackers, macaroni and cheese, things that are easy, simple, that they'll feel like putting together. So we, that's what we're doing today. We're collecting all of that. Obviously, in any normal year, these gifts would help seniors out. You know, these are things that we take for granted on a daily basis, but are essential to seniors. But this year, when so many seniors are afraid to leave their house because of the coronavirus pandemic, how essential is it for people to drop off these extra goods to help them out during the holidays? Well, hopefully, the, it, is a, it is a 
huge circumstance for these seniors. If we can get people to donate things, it will absolutely lift their spirits because they've been locked down. They haven't been able to do anything. They can't leave their rooms. So we're trying to come up with jigsaw puzzles, word finds, uh, that type of stuff also. All right, Sandy, thank you so much. And of course, you can come out uh, from 7 a.m. until later, or uh, you can come out all day today and drop off the goods. So I'm going to send it back to you guys. All right, Taylor, thanks so much. It's so important that everyone donates today if you can, especially this year, because like Taylor said, so many Kern County uh, seniors are uh, rely on this uh, to get through the next couple months. Welcome back in entertainment news. A tense moment on NBC's The Voice as Bakersfield's own Jim Ranger learned whether his journey on the show would continue. My gosh, you, you literally are one of the greatest vocalists that I've ever worked with, like ever. I, I don't say that lightly. I'm, I mean that. I, I've been at this show for a long time. I'm going to pick Jim. Jim, congratulations. We'll see you in Monday's live show. And for the remaining artists... And with that, Jim Ranger moves on to the semifinals next week on season 19 of The Voice. 17 singers performed Monday night with the top vote getter on each of the four teams advancing to the next round. The coaches then got a chance to save one of their artists and Blake Shelton chose Ranger. The top nine, including Ranger, will perform next week for a chance to be in the finale. All right, thanks so much, Kevin. And 17 News is your local election headquarters. Congress getting closer to dealing with coronavirus relief, including money to help families and small businesses. Tracy Potts has it covered from Washington. Hi, Maddie. Good morning, everyone. Not a lot to report, but at least Democrats in the White House are talking again. There's a new proposal on the table and a sense here in Washington that Congress needs to act quickly. President-elect Biden speaks to small businesses today. He's pushing Congress to act quickly on coronavirus relief. As we battle the COVID-19 disease, we have to make sure that business and workers have the tools, resources, and guidance and the health and safety standards to be able to operate safely. It's essential that we move with urgency. Urgency is building on Capitol Hill. Because the needs of people are desperate, desperate, Desperate. After weeks of delay, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin are talking again. These small businesses can't wait two or three months. Democrats and Republicans are pitching a $908 billion compromise. This is not a $1.8 trillion stimulus bill. This is a relief measure. Half that amount. Republican leader Mitch McConnell says he's focusing on what President Trump will support. I think the way you make a law for sure is you know you've got a presidential signature. The Federal Reserve Chair telling Congress businesses need more than loans. What they need is, is you know, is fiscal policy, is, is a grant to get them through this last bit of, of, uh, of the pandemic rather than... Um, you know, rather than borrowing more. Complicating things, there's talk of attaching COVID relief to a funding bill due in just over a week. Meantime, one of the president's closest allies, Attorney General William Barr, is telling the Associated Press that the Justice Department found no widespread evidence of election fraud. This amid reports that President Trump may be skipping inauguration to hold a rally, kicking off his next presidential campaign. I'm Tracy Potts, 17 News. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.